pretty beautiful. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast episode something or rather. Holy shit, man. This is always such a, a gangbuster show here. Uh, episode 162 for Thursday, the 15th of February, 2018. This is your two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos and that's Kent. How you doing, man? Dude, I am so ready for this four-day weekend that I'm about to begin. I, this is amazing. I remember back in the day when we had Ritual Misery on Fridays, and it was so great that I could just get wasted and sleep in the next day. Um, this is kind of reminiscent of that. Yeah. How, how about you? Uh, well, I I get wasted and sleep in every day. Well, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> hey, um, it's not just us, man. We have... A recent addition to our, uh, I guess, I, I'm going to call it our sister network. Okay. Um, uh, the the, the Gunna Geek Network. We have, we have a recent addition to the Gunna Geek Network. Uh, Garrett Totke with us tonight. How you doing, Garrett? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem, man. This is, um, this is kind of exciting. This, you're the, uh, the second person from Gunna Geek. So we had one of the original founders and then one of the new people. And that's uh, so we kind of book into everybody else can just fall in line. Everybody else in Gunna Geek needs to get on the show and have a have a righteous good time with us. Um, Definitely. So that being said, this is the point where I usually have something witty to kick over to Kent about about how shitty he is. But I'm just gonna say instead that uh, man, I'm prepping for uh, for South by. Yeah. Okay. Um, you packed or? No, uh, no. You, you got your, your plane ticket. Yeah, I do have a plane ticket. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. but you're not packed yet. No. Um, you got your passport ready? Uh, uh, your passport you're overseas, right? Passport is, uh, is already built in. It's built, built into my ID card. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I guess Alaska is not technically a foreign country, right? It should be, but no, it's not. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, judging by the beard, it looks like you're getting into hipster mode, which is, which is kind of an Austin thing. I'm a hipster or hippie. I don't know which one, but both of them are, are, are perfectly legit in a sense. No, man. Um, I bought a vape, so I'm not trying to bum cigarettes off everybody while I'm down there. Got a whole new vape. Until okay. the battery dies and then it's, you know, you're bumming batteries off people, right? Uh, that spares. A- Good. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Wow, you are super prepped. Holy yeah, dude. Crap. Uh, I am not messing around. Um, yeah, it, it's 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 so I don't have leave yet because my bosses haven't responded to me on any of the emails or texts that I've sent them. I guess they're waiting for me to just show up randomly one day at work. But then uh, I I don't I don't know that that's kind of a touchy situation because I've been gone so long I can't really complain and bitch. But uh, I'd still like to know that I'm going to be able to go and. Um, all that being said, yeah, man, I haven't I haven't packed a damn thing, but uh, I don't think I'm going to be bringing a whole lot because, well, we're just going to be hanging out, right? Um, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, we're going to be hanging out with a lot of people, I think, because on the eighth of March we are hosting a meetup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at the at the at the usual, the yep, huge Darwin's Pub on Sixth Street. We're going to hit the huge on uh, on Thursday night. Um, yeah. and, and then, uh, what are we going to what, what are we doing after that? Um, well, d- during the meetup, we're going to be playing some games. Uh, we're going to have some, some familiar faces, hopefully some new faces there. Uh, some people that, that you're definitely going to want to see. I've got on good authority that, uh, the one, the only Tay Allen is going to be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. helping us out with, um, with some of the activities there. Um, and then, uh, after that, I don't, I don't know. I might have a beer or two. What do you think, um, Garrett? Have you ever been to South by Southwest? I have not. No, no. Have, have you ever been to a uh, one of these unofficial, uh, like semi-official uh, conventions where you, you you go to a convention area but you don't partake in the convention necessarily? Have you ever done something like that? No, I haven't. So oh. you're just kind of convention adjacent. Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's <laughs> that. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a, a, a adjacent uh, or a, a convention concurrent, maybe. Uh, yeah, something okay. something along those lines. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so South by Southwest is a beautiful thing. Uh, it, it, right. It, it comes with the uh, convention adjacent uh, South by So Wasted. Have we gotten firm dates on that yet? Because I've been trying to keep up, and I haven't heard a damn thing yet. Yeah, so Night Attack officially announced on Tuesday, 
that on the 10th of March, that Saturday mm. at 2 p.m. at the, what is it? The Kung Fu Saloon. Oh. They're going to be doing Night Attack Live. Nice. New venue. Yep. And well, and uh, well, it's also on Sixth Street, so it's just it's just like a couple doors down from where they usually do it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, Possum Posse is going to be there. That is, I don't know if they've confirmed anything else, but but uh, Possum Posse is firm. Uh, that's that's awesome, man. That's really really cool. Um, okay, so enough about uh, the fun times we have yet to have. Uh, sure. We have yet to confirm because I still don't have leave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got Oh, and and Kent, my ticket. Like we we had discussions about my ticket. Like, well, should we wait to buy my ticket or whatever else? Because the prices were kind of bouncing around. Uh, last yeah. last check, the ticket is nine hundred and seventy two dollars. So oh, well, and we got it for about half that. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Every couple of days, uh, Google Trips reminds me, hey, uh, you want, I want to, might want to buy that ticket. I'm like, <laughs> thank goodness, I already yeah, have thank it. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, have you been watching the Olympics? Um, I've been trying. I've been trying uh, a little bit. Um, I, I know, like, Sean White pulled off, like, I think he flew for, like, three quarters of a mile and uh, yeah. did a couple flips and stuff. Maybe had, I think he had a controller in his hand controlling his board because he was doing, like, some yeah. wicked shit. And uh, I know, like, a couple of 17-year-olds walked away with more glory than I'm ever going to achieve in my life. So other than that, not really. Yeah, what about, what about you, Garrett? Did you, have you checked any of that out? So I... I used to watch a lot of Winter Olympics. I used to actually watch figure skating because uh, one of my friends growing up, his parents were figure skating coaches. And so I kind of got roped into that world. Uh, mm-hmm. Didn't watch it this year, but I did watch some of the curling and I watched like all the highlights of Sean White. Um, there was that female snowboarder who went absolutely insane, right? The 17 year old uh, yeah. woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't remember her name, but yeah, mostly been just catching YouTube highlights rather than trying to actually watch the Olympics. Yeah, yeah so can, you mentioned curling. Can we talk about curling for a minute? Uh, um, what about it? <laughs> okay, so it's an Olympic sport. Yes. How the fuck is it an Olympic sport? I mean, this is something that – this is basically a backyard game where you yeah. got the – you got a beer in your hand. You've got the grill going. You got you got grandma sitting on the porch, maybe drinking some lemonade. Uh, you got the kids fucking with the dogs. Um, you know, and then a little, little, little curling game going on with you and your pals, and it's an Olympic sport. It's a, it's a nonsense sport too. Like none of it makes sense. Like I don't know how they originally came up with the concept. It seems like something you just kind of built upon, and you're like, someone's going to stop us at some point, right? And it's just amazing. Yeah, I, I love it. You know, I, I it sounds like like I'm like I'm mad at the sport. No, I'm I'm, not, I'm just confused at how something this amazing can be an Olympic sport. Yeah, because this is this is the only Olympic event of any type. Summer Summer Games, Winter Games. This is the only one that I feel like I could qualify for right now. I could be an Olympian right now. There are fat guys, yeah, sliding the rock down the ice like I, I in tennis I, shoes. I, I can do this. Yeah, you don't oh, even need to learn how to skate. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I'm, I'm gonna do this. Like th- th- I looked this up. I, I did a Google search about about curling clubs in the U.S. and half of them take place um, like in um, like like basically adjacent to beer drinking clubs. They have like uh, brewers tournaments and yeah. uh, like like it's ba- it is a beer drinkers sport. I am all in, dude. This is gonna be my my. Second, like after my second retirement, my third career is going to be professional curler. Like that's that's that I'm in. Good. I I'm just going to bring this on the screen to share with everybody real quick. <gasps> um, if you are listening right now, what we are looking at are the Anchorage Curling Club website flashing sc- uh, screenshots of the specials and deals they have right now. And yes, this place is <laughs> right next to a pub. That is twenty dollars. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, twenty dollars per person. No experience necessary. Bring bring clean shoes. That's uh, <laughs> that's important. Uh, and and uh, as far as I know, this place is in operation twenty four or not twenty four, but uh, three three sixty five. Like they they're they're always open with the with the ice and the curling nice. and the and the, the stone that is throwing. freaking awesome. Well, I mean, to be fair, Alaska is always open with the ice, right? Uh, no, like that's just. 
No, no, no. We still have, I, I've been up here for damn near two years. And we still have yet to have enough snow on the ground that I can jump off my second floor patio and just flop into the snow. Like that's the dream. <laughs> that's, that's what we want. We want enough snow yeah. to actually have like a snow slide off our back patio. And it has, right, but yet. I mean, but to be fair, you're like you're, you're almost there all the time, right? Like you're no. like, it's just too shallow to do that. No, I wish. God, I wish we had that much snow. Such I mean, bullshit. are you are you telling me that that all the stereotypes I have in my head of Alaska are not 100 percent accurate? And like, like and, your, your house is actually an igloo, right? And more. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wish. I really wish. But no, curling is one. Of, I fell in love with curling during my heavy drinking days um, <laughs> back in '09 uh, when I was when I lived like a quarter mile from the from my local pub that was open 20 no 19 hours a day. Uh, and we would sit there and watch curling live in like what Sochi or whatever it was, or somewhere in the Alps or some shit. And right. yeah, yeah, we'd, we'd, we'd do uh curling shots. Have you ever done curling shots? No, explain what is that? Uh, anytime a stone either rolls through the target or hits another stone, and that other stone rolls out of the target, okay. So you, anytime you have anytime you have one stone going in and one stone coming out of the target on the same throw. That's a shot. Okay. Oh my God. That's um and like you just do that for one game, like like one full like ten ends. Oh, no, oh, or... uh, wait, wait, wait. I haven't finished because uh anytime you have and you have anytime you have a two for one, like one stone goes in and two stones come out, it's a bomb. Oh my god. <clears throat> and then if if ever there is a stone in the target and then there are no stones in the target, so you clear the target, uh right. that is a finish your beer. Oh wow, man! This I mean, this, this sounds like hospital trips. Uh, well, I, I mean, it, it was one of those things like you go in and you sit down, and you say, "Okay, I'm in." You start playing, and then whenever you're done, you just leave. Someone else fills up your spot, and you just keep going. Uh, the bartender like, as people fall off bar stools, there's a line <laughs> right. that takes yeah, place. The, uh, the 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 bartender may or may not have given us drink specials in accordance with how much curling we we would watch. So. <sighs> it, it, <laughs> <laughs> I I was a huge fan and always will be a huge fan of curling for my own personal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, badass. That man, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Garrett, Garrett, what have you been up to this week? You haven't been <laughs> watching a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of curling. No. no. Down here in Alabama, winter sports aren't really a, a thing. Um, as a matter of fact, snow's not really a thing. We had two inches of snow a, a few months ago, and it shut us down for five days. So we just we don't do that here. Um, but this week, uh, it's mostly been uh, editing, audio editing, and trying to do stuff on our own podcast, right? Mm. That takes up an insane amount of time. And also playing uh, Gloomhaven, which is the world's greatest board game. Mm. Uh, there is a, a section in Gloomhaven when you get far enough in that you run through solo scenarios. And I'm in the solo scenario section right now and just absolutely miserable. It is kicking my ass. <laughs> This um, so, so this is uh this is number one on Board Game Geek. <coughs> uh, I it's gonna run you about a hundred and fifty dollars. This cow. this is a game that I heard about because of yeah. conversations such as this, and have just yeah. never had the chance. I don't I don't have enough people to play with because right you know it, it's it's one of those that you really kind of need like you know best is three players or whatever. If you just have one player, it's kind of like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we're the whole we're thing with becomes a, full a solo group of trip. Four, and it's you know, it'll take about a year to get through playing once a week uh, for about like six hours a session. Jeez. Holy cow! So like, yeah. this I've isn't had something I, I can't just run that down. Didn't last long. <laughs> so I can't just run down to Walmart and like uh, you know pick this up. Um, this is like. No. Um, you know, th this isn't Clue or Monopoly or something. Right. Uh, like I, you can get it on Amazon. Uh, now, this sells out kind of constantly. So like right now you can pick it up at Amazon. It's saying for one hundred and sixty. Um, it'll sell out and people will scalp it for two, three hundred dollars for a few weeks and then they'll get more back in. But the problem is the game itself, it's a nine inch tall box and like two feet wide. The game weighs uh, something like twenty five pounds. Uh, so it's a whole lot of board game. This game comes with like, over 20 miniatures. Like, um, the organizational part of it is ridiculous. Most people have to buy a separate organizational kit that runs you like another $80 to hold all the stuff. Uh, it's just, it's a ton of game. Uh, there's a picture right there that you're scrolling through that kind of shows just how much crap you're dealing with. 
Uh, it is, it's just insane, but it's, it's also hundred percent worth it. It plays amazingly. You know, I work in games and this is the best designed game, be it video or tabletop, the best designed game any of us has ever seen. It's absolutely crazy. That is awesome. And uh, yeah. can, can you the can, name of it is Gloomhaven. I'm going to have to keep my eye yeah. out for that. Can, can you imagine playing this remotely and everybody has to have their own copy? Oh. So you're, you're, oh, you're, eight, hell you're, no. you're $650, $700 in just to play this game by Skype. Well, and now <laughs> this is also we have to have a GoFundMe just to <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> we need a Patreon um, before we start playing. Uh, <laughs> so do you know what a, a legacy style board game is? Mm -mm. Not, not, not legacy uh, style. You, you play through it once and you throw it away. Mm. Um, like oh. the game changes as you play. You tear up cards, you write on cards, you modify stuff. It's it's kind of like a living game, right? Uh, and so okay. this is a legacy game. Like by the time you're at the end of it, you would want to buy a, another copy if you ever wanted to play again. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. And you can, you can go out of your way and buy reusable stickers and, and – take all the fun out of it and have it be reusable. But you know, half the fun is you, you kick the ass of some big dungeon. You're like, I'm tearing that up, you know, throw it in the trash. Right. It, it feels good. Right. It's all part of it. Uh, you lose that. And that's a shame, but this game it's, it's absolutely crazy. We, that's one of our podcasts is we're actually covering just this game. And uh, for some reason, people listen to that, but it is well, this game because is just amazing. I'm willing to bet the podcast is free, and this game is not. Right. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. What, what's the name? Yeah, by the way, let our listeners know what right? is the name of that podcast if they're interested in knowing more about Gloomhaven. Uh, so it is called Misadventures: Colon A Gloomhaven Podcast. Uh, but if you just look up Gloomhaven on like iTunes or whatever, we're the only one. So. It's it's pretty easy. <laughs> that that is not, a, not uh, many other podcasters can afford this game, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, another good point, Kent. Yeah, um, I, I was gonna say, uh, damn, this game's expensive. Might be a good al alternate name. Yeah, uh, or um, you know, or or holy shit, I hope it's you fun. Get for uh, it, it's it's actually pretty good. You know. Hmm. Yeah. Right on. Right on. I'm gonna. Yeah. yeah. That's that's really it's, cool. It's cheaper than like a magic card habit, right? <laughs> uh, I mean. I'm I'm only about uh, five grand into uh, over my head on this podcast things that I've right? been doing for a couple of years now. So I, I mean I can't really complain about a game uh, costing a little extra cash. So uh, there's there's yeah. there's all my savings for the last however long I've been doing this shit. Um, <clears throat> man, it looks it looks fun though. It looks like uh, what, what what was that the name of that game, Kent? That we we were playing back in the back in the day. Oh, in my garage. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, God, hero was it? Heroes Quest or something well, no, like that? No, 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 no. The, the one after that, the where it was like a battlefield. Oh, um, it had geez. all the goblins. Ba battle masters. Battle masters. Battle masters. It looks like yeah. a combination of those two: hero quest and battle masters. Um, yeah. Because yeah. that's what we did with battle masters. We just we threw shit away because we we're like we're not yeah. fighting that guy again. Oh shit, we need him yeah. for this scenario. <laughs> somebody yeah, go, well, somebody I mean, go drag him out of the trash. Be, between that and just breaking the pieces because, you know, we're yeah. we're actually using catapults to knock shit down. <laughs> that we, that actually sounds pretty great. We we may or may not have have uh found our own forms of ammunition for random shit in that game. Uh <laughs> Jack, Jack Daniels uh, is a yeah. hell of a drug. Um it is. So <laughs> so you're not gloomhavening. What else are you yeah. doing, man? Well, um I uh I've made the mistake of going back to college, get another degree thing going on. So that takes up a whole lot of my time. Uh, you know, between that podcast and work, that is the vast majority of your free time, throw a kid in the mix and there goes the rest of it. Uh, but whenever I have a chance, you know, video games, right? Anytime I can get into it, I've worked in the games industry for about a decade now. Uh, and so I like to use video games as like an excuse, like, no, it's, it's work research. You know, I need, I need time to do this. Right. Uh, yeah, so yeah. just trying to fill my time with that. <laughs> so, what is it that you that you do in the games industry? Like, what what is your uh, what is your particular talent? What is it? So you would say you do here, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bolton. Uh, so these days, I am a producer and I also do marketing. Uh, those are my kind of two main functions. But over the years, I've done a lot of different things. Like in the early days of MMOs, I was a game master back when that was still fun before they turned into just customer service service agents, right? Uh, I did that. I worked on a lot of like free to play mobile apps, designing free to play systems, you know, trying to figure out how to steal your money and mm. those kind of systems. Uh, 
worked on some stuff that was really cool. Like I got to work on the Reading Rainbow app that they made for iPad. Uh, and hmm. that was really, really cool, you know, getting to work with LeVar Burton. He's everyone's idol, right? Anyone who has been alive since he's been alive. Right. Uh, that was really cool. But also, you know, you have to pay bills. So I worked on things like the Vampire Diaries. And that's not as cool. <laughs> but, you know, when when I, when I was looking at that gig, they needed someone to kind of do their Facebook game. And this was back when people played Facebook games. But I was like, hey, that's fine. And I will do this. But do I have to actually watch the show? And they're like, no, 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 that's not necessary. I was like, okay, yeah, cool, I'm in. You know, I'll, I'll take the job, right? <laughs> wow. But yeah, so just kind of been all over. A gig. From like, Yeah, exactly. And getting into the games industry can be kind of a nightmare, so you take what you can get early on. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's absolutely. I, 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 I stopped playing uh, Facebook games and realized that I had to be on Facebook to do it. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, this is dumb." And that was right about the same time that iOS three came out, and and like free to play games were actually hitting the market. And I was like, "Oh, look at this! I can play this, and I can do this." Yeah. Oh, now I have an iPhone. I can do it whenever I want. Oh my god, my life is over. Yep. <laughs> uh, Hello, Angry Birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how did that get so big? That just n- never made sense to me. Just how how insane that went. You can go to the grocery store and get Angry Birds like fruit snacks. Yeah. Like I don't. That IP went insane. <laughs> Um, I think it was just right place, right time. Clearly. It, uh, it, was, it, it was really like the first mobile game that that anybody really paid attention to. It was because originally it was it was free to play, uh, but you only you'd only yep. play like the first three levels and then you had to pay for the for the full version or whatever, mm-hmm. I believe. And um it was the first game that anybody it was so accessible because it was so simple. Like you pull a little thing, everybody understands the slingshot, you let go, and all of a sudden, what happens? This frustration is released. So now you're yeah. you're you're on your smoke break because your boss just pissed you off. You're flinging little <laughs> fucking birds around, and you're hitting big ass pigs. And it's just like, I'm 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 getting my fix, and I'm I'm hurting things without actually hurting anybody. <laughs> uh, this is amazing. I'm killing small sure. animals with other small animals. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I'm throwing yeah. s- small digital things at s- other small digital things. And oh, by the way, there's some very loose physics involved so i'm actually using like an intellectual part of my brain let's let's admit half of us don't fucking use that part of our brain regularly enough so you put all that into (laughs) one package and i think that's what it was it was just it wasn't necessarily right place right time it was the first time that all that was wrapped up in a in a such an accessible patch package right yeah yeah so you're saying it was it was portable dog fighting is kind of what i'm getting from you Uh, and that's why it kind of caught on portable legal dog fighting yeah uh with yeah without the asp that's that's what i always saw as uh pokemon (laughs) on game boy it's kind of what that was right okay so i i missed pokemon like it it hit right at an age where i just i was i was too cool for the games at the time right that went away real quick. I, I quit trying to be cool after that. But so I, I kind of missed the window to that. But my daughter is super into Pokemon. She's got like Pokemon encyclopedias, and you know, yeah, she's like, "Hey, Dad, remember how this happens?" And I'm like, "Nah, no." So, <laughs> so this is this is where me and Kent were at. Uh, Kent's oldest is a year older than my oldest, and his second child is a year younger than my second child. Okay. So you've got a spread there of like what five years between Isaac and Lucas. Uh, about four, uh, four and some change. Okay, so but it, it's pretty, it's pretty well spread. It's I mean, mm-hmm. you know, between the four kids, um, Isaac couldn't give a shit about it. Amber didn't know what it was. Ashley was just on the tail end where it's kind of cool to be retro, and then Isaac was all about it. So that's uh. that's where that scale is. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty, yeah, pretty much. You talking about Pokemon as retro kind of hurt me for a second because I remember when that was new and and. Uh. <laughs> That's all oh, right. That was that's okay. That was oh yeah. my god. That was like twenty years ago. I yeah. think when it yeah. was kind of new. And we and were we were in Japan, so it was like it was hitting the the U.S. market. It was showing up at the BX just as it was leaving the stores in Japan. Like Japan was like ah, that's the old shit. We're going on to the new stuff. Yeah. Right as the BX was picking up, going look at the new shit. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so this is weird, weird dichotomy living there at that time uh, and and having kids that were into Pokemon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. pretty pretty crazy. Um, what about what about Marvel movies, uh, Garrett? You into Marvel movies? So I'm not like a huge comic book person, but I, I do enjoy the movies. Like I recently, just this last weekend, watched Thor Ragnarok finally, mm. and that's probably one of the finest Marvel superhero movies I've ever seen. I was so enjoyable. 
Yeah, it's so good. That movie is just fun. It's just it yeah. it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's just badass fights and lots mm-hmm. of jokes and just you got some visually- rock opera. And like we uh, we had a theory we we're talking about at work. We don't think Jeff Goldblum had any lines or got to see a script. Like they just did him in makeup. They sent him out there and they're like, just do you, you know, watch whatever's happening. Just kind of roll with it. You know, <laughs> yes. and it makes perfect sense with the way his character rolls out. But yeah, just fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Jeff, just go be Jeff. We're going to film yeah. you for about eight hours and then we're just going to pick and choose what we want from you. That's right. <laughs> yeah, very much. I just rewatched. Uh, Captain America Civil War. Uh, okay, yeah. Because Black Panther is coming out, like, right now. Mm-hmm. Like, it, right now. I think it's debuting, it's like, out, as right? we speak. Um, yeah, we're going to go it's... Saturday, I think, to watch it. And mm-hmm. it had been such a long time since I'd seen this movie that I, I wanted to revisit it before seeing Black Panther because that movie is is the movie that Black Panther was actually introduced as a character. Right. And I wanted to kind of revisit that and see – see where we leave off with him and with the winter soldier and, and uh, you know, all of that just so that it's fresh in my mind so that when I sit down in the, in the dark theater on Saturday, it's just going to be, all right, let's go. I don't have to remember anything. It's just, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so um, excited. The only thing I had to say about this, and if you, if you, if you watch my, my stream on a regular basis, you'll have seen this before it got moved down. Um, the, I, I retreated a, 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 a Twitter post that said, uh, the only two white actors in Black Panther are Martin Freeman, who played Bilbo Baggins, and Andy Serkis, who played Gollum. They're the token mm. white guys. <laughs> I thought that shit was hilarious. Like, I'm all about the puns. I'm all about the, the token references yeah. and everything else. My wife, who never never bothered, she she doesn't, she doesn't give two shits about whatever I put on social media or anything else, as long as it didn't involve her. Within right. like 30 seconds, she was texting me, take that shit down. Don't be an <laughs> asshole, you insensitive piece of shit. And I was like, <laughs> what? And, and yeah, and I didn't get it. But then at the same time, like, right. who the fuck am I to say that that's not insensitive to somebody? Sure, if, if, right. my, if my black wife wants to tell me that some shit's insensitive, I'm taking it down. <laughs> like, it, it was. She might know better. Right, right. It was one of those, like, just, hey, hey, white privilege motherfucker, check yourself and listen to. <laughs> Listen to the better of you and take that shit down, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I thought it was hilarious, and I, I still don't understand. Like, I'm probably missing a really big rock right in front of my face. Like, I, can't, <laughs> I cannot see the forest for all the trees in my way. But I thought it was hilarious, and immediately, immediately I knew I had to just check my fucking privilege at the door and take that shit down. <laughs> and I was like, okay, yeah. well my wife never says shit and she threw that at me. Um, um, wow. Ouch. So there, there, that's, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. I mean, I'm with you. I don't find it probably as hilarious as you, but I think it's, I think it's amusing and I think it's fine. And I, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'll check my privilege <laughs> too. <laughs> you know, without trying to dive too far into this, cause I, <laughs> Also, I'm a privileged person, right? I don't, I can't fully understand this, but from what I've seen, like Black Panther is just kind of a thing. It's it's a first for a lot of things, for a Marvel movie, for the actors in it, for the filming locations and all that. And it kind of seems like the general attitude is like, hey, white people just just don't fuck with it. Just go watch it and enjoy it, but shut up about it. Mm. You know, like mm. that seems to be mm. that seems to be the thing. And I'm fine with that. I can I can totally live with that. Are, are we finally yeah. at the point in society where there are, are at least a certain subset of us that are willing to openly admit sometimes we just shut up in color because we 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 just we know that we don't know. Like yeah. Is it is it finally okay to say that? Like, <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of us are recognizing that we just we just don't know shit. And um, should probably yeah. just shut up. <laughs> so so trade chat on uh, on on Twitter had a fan that kind of went off on her about some shit, and uh, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what it was, but she basically said it's it's hard to person when you have a lot of followers. Now she's got about half a million people that follow her between yeah. Twitch and and you know youtube and and uh uh, twitter and all that and i was sitting there thinking i was like man i'm a middle-aged white guy with about half a percent of her following and i can barely life i can't imagine personing at her like with her followership plus all the misogynistic bullshit that Mm. our society throws at her like i can't 
And I, I, I actually I formulated that into a cohesive thought, which is rare, and put that on the Twitter. And w- even sending that out, I was like, <sighs> what rule am I breaking? Yeah, like but, what line did I just cross? Exactly, with this? but yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I can't not. I, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm probably just the biggest asshole in the world. But uh, <laughs> again, I, I'm willing to admit that I just don't know. The rules yeah. are changing. Yeah, and I think that's a big step, man. I think if if yeah. everybody would just say that it's you know I just I don't I don't know. Hmm. I, I think we'd be better off just automatically. Not, I've never yeah. been a big misogynist, racist piece of shit or anything like that, but it, 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 even in my middle-of-the-road views, which aren't exactly middle-of-the-road, they're <laughs> really liberal, honestly. But um, even with my, my middle-of-the-road views, I'm still like uh, constantly, especially with the Me Too shit, like that kind of put it all in my mind. Like I'm just mm-hmm. constantly in a, in a state of check myself. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I was thinking about this, too, because like just like you, Amos, the, the Me Too thing got me thinking about like my past and things that I might have said and done in, in the past and whatnot. Right. And like, was I was friend... I ever skeevy? Do I need to like call someone and apologize? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah we. we yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, but but furthermore, like like this week, I, I kind of went the next layer uh, deeper into this. Oh shit. Um, Justin Robert Young on his podcast this week on the jury podcast, he was talking about a stand up comic um, bit that he did. He like he he made a CD of himself performing stand up basically. Hmm. Uh, back when he was uh, in college, I think this was like 15 years ago or something. And he decided that he was going to give it away as a prize when he found it. Uh, without having listened to it first. And then he decided to play it for his Twitch audience live in real time while he was watching, you know, he hadn't heard this since he recorded it forever. And then he was talking about how, how just embarrassed he was for himself, not just at the the poor quality of the comedy, but also some of the things that he said were like way out of line. Like uh, I think it was a homophobic slur. Mm. Um, and just some of the other things. And I was like, man, like rewind 20 years ago. What did I say? Like, what were some of the things that I was saying at the time? And it's, I would probably, if I had a recording of that stuff, I would probably be just as embarrassed as Justin. That's, you know, I have never been more happy. Like, I'm so glad that I missed the Facebook and, and Twitter and all that when I was a teenager that wasn't a thing. Right. And oh my yeah. God, I'm so happy. I can't imagine going back and seeing what my 14 year old dumbass thought about anything. I was wrong about everything. Yeah. And there's no 14 year old boy who's not wrong about everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and right. I'm so glad that it's not out there forever. It's, it's such a blessing. Um, my, my thing is that, uh, I, I know about, I, I, I can clearly remember one conversation I had and Ken's currently working on this video. Um, I can clearly remember one conversation I had with a friend of mine and I, I'm not going to go into details because it is like the yeah. one time that I, I know there was a line and I jumped so far across it that it probably wasn't even good 20 years before that. And that was 20 years right. ago, <laughs> you know, so I'm like 40 years. It's it just, and I, 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 I the, the, the most innocent of, of intentions, but looking back at it, I'm like, that was, Man, that was a, that was that that was that was I that was stupid. Yeah, that wasn't like oh I'm young stupid. That was just hey you're an idiot. You're you're stupid stupid. So yeah, yeah like your IQ does not qualify you to be an adult. <laughs> right, you don't know. And and at the time, honestly, it clearly didn't. Um, <laughs> I just married my first wife, so that tells you where I was at. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Y'all are like, I don't know where to go from there. Hey, um, no, no, I was just thinking, like, you know, my first wife thing was absolutely terrible, too. So I think that's, I think you're supposed to have a bad first one. That's just, a, it's a learning experience. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, oh, 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 there's a TV show about that, wouldn't it? Like the first wives club or something. Um, oh, God. Have you guys heard the terms I, white walling or red pilling? So I've heard of red pilling, uh, okay. but white walling is new to me. Okay. Um, and can't, we still don't have a video from you. Uh, the, White walling is an interesting one for me because uh, I, I learned about them in that order. White walling one day, then red pilling the next. 
Okay. White walling is when you go to your Facebook profile and you um, retroactively make all of your posts private. Okay. To where they're only you or so that they are like only a certain subset of friends or deleting the posts entirely without deleting your account. So that uh, we had video, then we lost it. Um, So that, so that future employers or, or girlfriends or boyfriends or, or whatever can't go back and see the stuff. Also, that's brilliant. That's good. Yeah. So that's, I'm down with that. That's white walling. Okay. Kent, had you heard of that before? I have not heard it referred to as that. No. Right. Okay. Um, so that that's I do know that you know Facebook has that on this day thing all the time. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, remember like four years ago this happened? That reminds me to delete a lot of posts. Like it'll <laughs> pop up and it'll be like something I said four years ago, and I'm like, oh, I'm a jackass. Delete. You know. <laughs> that's a good feature. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, remember that time you were stupid? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's white walling. And then red pilling is when you are made aware of something in the world at large that the mm-hmm. average person isn't aware of. And of course it's a reference to the matrix. Yeah. No, that's, like that's immediately what I thought of. It's kind of co-opted negatively though, right? Like you've got like, um, incels and, and certain subsections of the internet who look at red pilling and it. I don't know. There's there's negative connotations I feel like online that have come with red pilling in the last mm. few years. Uh, but it, it, I guess it doesn't have to be. You say few years. I heard about this term four days ago. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> I heard about it forty five seconds ago. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, red pilling would be like um, uh, suddenly becoming aware that. Uh, all the I'm, I'm going to make some shit up because I, I don't know if this is true, but uh, suddenly becoming aware that all of the senators that voted for uh, or voted against gun laws were also paid by the NRA. Right, right, right. You know, uh, something like that. And that would be red pilling or uh, suddenly realizing that uh, your entire past history self has been a complete douche to half the population on the planet. Uh, that maybe you should go back and check yourself and re- remember that in your future endeavors because go whitewall your Facebook. Yeah, yeah, you need to whitewall your Facebook because you just <laughs> you just red pilled the Me Too mu- movement. Uh, oh God! Oh, <laughs> wow! This needs a hashtag. Yeah, yeah. It's um. So there you go. That's uh. That's how all that wraps up. And I figured I'd bring those up because I I I figured good conversation would spring from them. I didn't think they would be the punchline of a great conversation. Right. So, <laughs> well, I you know what. Here's my thing. I am very <clears throat> impressed that white walling is what it is because I just knew it was going to be a shitty thing that white people did. I just mm. knew it. Uh, and it yeah. wasn't. And I'm really happy for all of us. <laughs> Thank God well, not all white people red, are complete red, bastards red, all the time. Red, that re- realization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you red pilled the white walling. wasn't wasn't Ooh. as bad as you thought. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Um, I, I always, oh, yeah, that's so many thoughts from that that I I just can't get into in my current employment situation. Sure. Um, what were we talking about before? <laughs> uh, Everything just kind of spiraled out of control. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode <laughs> <Yeah>. 162. <laughs> As I am trying to troubleshoot my video. I, I'm, I'm de- yeah, yeah. Ken's trying to figure out his video. I'm trying to like derail my own conversation here. Uh, Garrett, you're just along for the ride. Really appreciate you hanging in there, bud. I'm just enjoying myself, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like you said, Amos, a typical episode of the Ritual Misery. Podcast. Yeah, this, this this is why we're not. Uh, this is why we don't have half a million followers. Um, <laughs> wow. So I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this on Twitch tomorrow, where I'm suddenly a piece of shit because I'm part of red pilling the Me Too movement. There's a <laughs> clip of this floating around, and uh, it's gonna be great. It's yeah, be great. Uh, I mean, it, it, it hashtag con con uh, context. Holy crap! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, Twitter's really yeah. good at context. I'm not worried about it. Oh yeah, it, as you shouldn't be. Yeah, there's no doubt. Right. There's no doubt that uh, Twitter will handle everything appropriately, especially involved with Twitch. Um, oh yeah, it's just a good thing we're not all on the Twit network. That'd be kind of a trifecta of what the fuck. Um, <clears throat> now you have several podcasts, Garrett. So why don't you yeah. tell us about all of those? Uh, we already talked about one, but uh, let's, let's right, go down we talked the slew. about misadventures. Uh, yeah, the other one is uh, called Gamer Public Radio. Yeah, and so this, is, this is the one that I'm familiar with somewhat. Right. 
Yeah, Misadventures isn't part of Gunna Geek. That is a new side thing we just kind of spun up for fun, uh, which it's all for fun. Obviously, we don't make money in our podcast. Podcasts are gigantic money sinks. <laughs> but, um, you know, the Gamer Public Radio, the vision started out as a broader network uh, hub for unbiased gaming journalism. I've always felt that uh, we don't have good gaming journalism. You know, I, I want our medium to be taken seriously. I do consider games are art. I know that's kind of a cliche and stuff, but I take it very seriously. I work in this, right? And I wanted reporting and things that reflected how serious I take the industry. And that's where Gaming Pub Gamer Public Radio, the idea came from, was a very open, very transparent news agency like NPR, right? Um, instead, we have a podcast. Uh, the other stuff will hopefully come... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hashtag context all right <laughs> yeah. uh but so for now it is me and uh it is a lead designer at the studio i work at and we kind of go over the last week in games game news we did we cover different topics like if some big gaming drama happens we we try to give kind of an industry perspective on it mm. uh let's see we we bring in lots of guests uh we try to get people who work at other studios or people who like, we had someone with PAX recently, you know, we just try to have a lot of different parts of the culture covered. And then we also have a Wednesday episode. We go twice a week, which we've been doing two episodes a week for coming up on a year now. And it's, it's a little tiring, but you know, um, <laughs> episode two, we usually have some kind of mini series going. Uh, right now we're doing the challenge where we challenge each other to like a video game feat of strength. Mine was trying to get good at Dwarf Fortress, which I don't know if you're aware of Dwarf Fortress, but that's a horrible thing to do. <laughs> and uh, and my co-host, Casey, he was challenged to, he doesn't play uh, MOBAs. And I was like, well, then you have to get into a tournament level competitive tier of MOBA playing. And so we're both just punishing the shit out of each other and then reporting on it, you know, and, and just how miserable it all is. Mm -hmm. so. Amazing. <laughs> um, uh, that, though, we had a really cool series that I miss and I want to go back to this because uh, I think it's really cool we, we called it 49 cent bangers and what we would do is during the steam wait, sale wait, the wait, wait wait yeah. wait wait yeah. <laughs> I, Kent 49 yes. cent bangers yeah give me Kent give me a context in which this is a good thing the 49 cent bangers 49 cent bangers well uh bangers i think of as uh sausage right oh, okay. like bangers and mash okay right so banger so 49 cent breakfast would be a brilliant thing oh okay all right i get you i get you i, I was thinking more like uh, uh 49 cent bangers like the um uh like uh, um um the bangers would be like a a a, a sports ball team and the 49 cent bangers would be like little little things that you get when you go to the game. They're like 49 cents. You can get each of the little character, each of the each of the players, like a little doll or whatever of each of the players. The little figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little okay. figurines that you could get. You know, the 49 cent bangers, they could be like a special Monday night special thing, you know? Mm. <clears throat> See, I would have gone with like um, Sriracha chicken nuggets at Wendy's, right? They're little 49 cent bangers, the little hot chickens. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I, get like, I mean, anyway. I Six for three dollars, you know. Be, uh, I mean, if you're you're in the red light district, this takes on a whole different yeah. meaning. No, 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 and that's why I wanted to say a good context because forty nine right. cent banger in a bad context, man. That that's, I mean, we could just list down the places we've been stationed, Kent, and we can figure out all kinds <laughs> of fucking separate bad things for forty nine cent bangers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okinawa. Uh, <clears throat> wow. Uh, Song Tong. Um, what? Uh, yeah. Okay. So back to your forty nine right, cent right, bangers. Yeah. yeah. Let's get the uh, so anyway, hashtag yeah, context. The, <laughs> the cheapest that Steam will let you sell a game is forty nine cents during one of the Steam sales. Mm. And so Casey and I went in there and we bought a whole bunch of just forty nine cent games without even looking at what they were. And uh, obviously none of them are good, right? Right. Well, uh, bought a bunch of games and we made a series of we would play through a game a week and then we would go through a design and development critique of it and stuff and. And that was the that was the shtick. Mm. And that was really cool. But it was also just absolutely mentally exhausting because you're playing through just the worst of the worst. And you're trying to give like legitimate development critique and break down the systems. And it. Yeah. Not again. Oh, not again. man. Oh. Uh, so I take it that both of you, though, you were both army, both military, at least, but both army or. 
um, well, Air Force. Um, about 50 Air Force. Oh, zoomies. All right. Plus All right. years ago, um, our branch of service separated from the army and became its own independent service known as the United States right. Air Force. Thanks for the history. No, it's the good one. Fuck. Don't get me wrong. I, I recognize that it's the good one. I, <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, I, I retired actually from active duty a couple of years ago. Amos is still active duty today. Okay, awesome. awesome. Uh, yeah, and, and, and so okay, uh, derail the conversation one more time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've learned a uh, few things about myself in this last few months that I've been on this convalescent leave with the back injury and this and that and and, and I'm not talking about the injury. I don't understand how men go through life with a fucking mustache. This is the stupidest shit ever. I'm finally just fucking tired of it. I'm done. Like, it's going to go away very soon. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe tonight. Um, I, in the final straw, the final straw was today while I was doing DTNS, I was trying to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I left the house and I had a gob of jelly. Grape fucking jelly right here oh. in the mustache. Didn't know it until I'm going along and I go to scratch my <laughs> face. My hand comes away purple. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I go and I feel and there's a gob, like a gob, like it's stuck. Like, like that's the flavor saver, man. No, fuck that. This is stupid as <laughs> shit ever. Fuck mustaches. I'm done. It's over. The fascination is gone. Um, See for me, it's it's fine until you get the head cold, and that's when the mustache oh, really oh, starts to fall apart. That's the other thing. It's I I I went out last night and cleared the driveway before my sister in law went to work, and then I I was still up, so I cleared the driveway again before my wife went to work this morning. Both times, like if 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 it's cold outside and you're breathing through your nose like you're supposed to when it's cold, that way you get, you know warms up the air and shit like that. Every time you breathe out, moisture gets stuck on the fucking hairs right here, and by the time you're done. You can't dry that off. You can't wipe it off enough to actually effectively dry a fucking mustache. It still feels cold and wet and stupid. This is stupid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but if you try oh to do the beard God. without it, you're just Amish. Uh, well, we're going to find out because that's where it's going. That's where we'll all be next week. <laughs> 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 like, I'm fucking done. Just. <laughs> Oh my gosh! And you'll finally live up to your name, Amos. Oh yeah, see exactly, man. I'll, I'll, I'm going to give me like a little uh, one of those little fucking buckle hats and shit, and just call it a day. Um, yeah. So the reason I, I actually asked you guys that is, uh, do you remember when the army made a video game called America's Army? Yes. 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 That's that's what I work on these days. That's that's what I'm doing. So. Oh wow! Uh, okay. I don't okay. normally bring up the name because I don't try to. As you well know, there's there's invoking the military while you work with the military while you're doing anything that doesn't directly that could be taken the wrong way you know whatever right uh but yeah. I, I felt like it was worth bringing up you know just to say hey we're still alive like we're still making a game it's still there uh, we're on ps4 now too which is kind of gnarly <laughs> but you should, um, you should download it i need the numbers yeah and that's, a, that's a free down that's a free download right yeah, no, it is. It's completely free. Like since it's you know army funded, there's no microtransactions. It's mm. actually illegal for you to give us money. Like we we would get in trouble. So, yeah. Um, it's not illegal for you to give money to our friends uh, over at Lienzo who have finally released a or, or given out a release date for Mulaka. This game we've we we like two two three years ago we had them on after meeting Edgar at South by Southwest. Yes. The game is finally going to come out on the 27th of February and it's going to be right before South by. They're not going to be at South by because they're actually making the trip to GDC the following week, yep. which yep. I don't know why South by would have gaming the same time as GDC would have GDC, <sighs> but whatever. Right. <laughs> I feel like that's GDC's fault somehow. Hey, look, GDC, we've been around a while. Like, i <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, and, and South by did just recently move the gaming weekend to the last weekend. But anyway, um, yeah, that is that is true. Yeah, you're right. That That's being South said, the week it, South by. the week after uh, the week after GDC, we're going to have them on the show to talk about their development process and how it's gone since we talked to them last time back uh, two two years ago. It's been since uh, they had them on. Well, I think no, it's I think it was about a year ago we had them on most recently. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like three years ago, we met those dudes and we were super stoked about yeah. their game Mulaka. 
and to see that it's finally reached maturity and is being released on like every system you've ever heard of. Um, How do you spell this game? M U L A K A. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm super thrilled for these guys. I can't wait to talk to them again. Um, uh, just really excited to see this thing finally come out, and I'm way more excited to actually play the game. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to that. I'm definitely going to get my hands on that and uh i'm, I'm gonna play the hell out of it i i can't wait i oh this this game is absolutely gorgeous i i yeah the art style is amazing the animation is amazing the the way that they've def, the, they've made up the uh because i have not played it yet i i will go on record saying that i did request a uh, an advanced key so that i can play the game before it comes out because i just i fucking, fucking love the concept of this game <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, how often do you get a chance to ask for something like that from a, from a friend or whatever? So an acquaintance or, uh, I guess they're friends. We've had beers and that qualifies me as friends. Anyway. Hell yeah. <clears throat> it's automatically. Fr- I have like <laughs> 7,000 friends, by the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it, and it's coming out on all the systems, all the, like it's coming out on, on steam and, um, switch on the 27th. And then on the first, it comes out on PlayStation and Xbox, uh, yeah, super psyched, and hopefully it, we might actually be able to get a key to give away. I'm hoping, uh, maybe. So, um, yep. yeah, look for we look forward to that. But it, it's weird that we have you on right now. That news came out two days ago, and you know you're talking about how the the, the, the process of making games and critiquing games and rebuilding yeah. and. And then they finally, after years, literally years of this small shop in Chihuahua. I say Chihuahua because it just sounds better when you put the two bad pronunciations together. Um, it's, I, I prefer Chihuahua. Right, and it's Chihuahua, so I said Chihuahua because then it's like melding the two <laughs> shitty versions together. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, th- th- this 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 small shop of, of game guys and th- this incredible history of these people that hardly anybody knows, it's going to yeah. be awesome, and we're super psyched about that. So if you have not heard of that game, where have you been? And you need to check that out because it's amazing. Yeah, and, and coming out on the Switch right now, that's strong. You know, uh, everything is selling like hotcakes on there. That platform is doing gangbusters. So that is really, really great that they're getting to go all platforms. That is yeah. not – even for a big studio, it sucks to try to release your game on all platforms. That's a huge effort. That's really awesome of them. Yeah, and they they were just uh, uh during the last Nintendo thing they were actually f- featured as one of their little featurettes or whatever. So awesome! They have a lot of lot of steam going, to, go, a lot of uh, a lot of momentum. Let's say that instead of steam because that sounds weird. But um, they yeah. they have a lot of well, momentum going into this game and coming with the release, and it's, it's looking like it's going to be amazing. So I'm super psyched. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I, I I thought it was funny that you said a lot of steam. Uh, just right after I I uh, put in the Twitch chat the Steam link to the game. <laughs> so um, yeah, it it is Windows only on Steam as far as I can tell. So that kind of cuts Kent's a uh, 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 platform out. He's gonna have to go with the PS4 version. But yeah, I, I, they're probably kind of gonna come up with a, a Mac OS version, but uh, does not look like it's currently available. No. Um, so that that's uh th- this is one of those shows where we have games that we like to play and we have TED talks we like to do and sometimes the conversation just takes over and it's a good goddamn thing because yeah. we didn't have anything beyond introductions in our show notes from any <laughs> of us. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I've been checking these show notes for the last like four weeks or so since you sent them to me. Yeah, and I'm like, no, there's, st- there's still nothing there. I- I'm not going to put anything yet. I'm just going to keep watching, see what happens. Yeah. And then today I saw movement. I was like, ah, oh, it's time to start typing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, because because it's so topical, we can't do anything before like, like we can't put anything into next week when we have Curly on because well that's this week's shit. So the first sure. thing we're gonna do is carry over anything we forgot to talk about today, and then yes. as, as the week goes along, if that loses prominence, we'll delete it as we're adding other stuff to it. So it's always like the day of. Uh, we we uh. We, we've already booked um, uh, Tom Merritt for like sometime in June, and we've already got his ready, and it's already sent to him, I think. But it's just going to sit there for the next three months. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So that's our work cycle. Um, how uh, <laughs> you, you say uh, you say you spend a lot of time doing the audio editing and things like that for your yeah. podcast? How much time do you actually have you have you like tracked your time for your podcast? Like how much time you put into it? Uh, you know, I have. So I work. All of my editing I do in Adobe Audition. Mm-hmm. Um, 
absolutely love it. Yes. And I really spent a lot of time running, you know, a lot of automated processes, saving those automated processes. So I have it refined pretty well now. You know, we uh, we record using Zencaster, which is a, you know, it's just kind of a four per, like, you can do as many hosts as you want, but it's really good tech and when it works. And that's what we do. We don't do video. We don't do live. Mm. And so we'll do our recordings. Typically, we release a new episode Sunday morning. We'll record Saturday night because mm. uh, we are man children who don't plan ahead. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, plus, you know, it, it's easier to have all of the latest stuff. If we recorded on Wednesday, we'd miss half the week worth of stuff to talk about. Mm. Uh, but we will record that. I'll take the tracks. And it usually takes me. I'm going to say maybe half the time of the recorded time. Time, right. So if we did an hour episode, 30 minutes is a decent average um, to get in there, run all my run all my processes, get it all mixed together properly, make sure all the audio is lined up and then go through and, you know, cut out big breaths and cut out big gaps and remove any mistakes we made. Because unlike you, we're not live. So we have the the joy of being able to sound like we know what we're doing at all times, which is really nice. OK, yeah, like so, a three hour recording for a 45 mm-hmm. minute show. The- right. The reason I the reason I asked this because recently I started reaching out and asking people on a volunteer basis if you need some audio production done or whatever else let me know and I'll see what I can do and it'll help my skill set you'll get some free yeah. uh, editing done or whatever and we'll kind of meet in the middle um, and of course this week would be the week where I just had like I finally got someone they're like yeah you know you can do this or whatever and I haven't had time to actually get in there and get it done because fucking life but. Right. Um, <laughs> Last two weeks would have been fine. This week, not so much, which, of course, that's going to work out. For this show, last week we had a big gap in, in things, and this show took a little bit longer. But I wanted to, I wanted to ask, because it's, it's kind of a fascination of mine. It's something I, geek, I personally geek out about is, is workflows. And one of the things I want to look into is using like some, uh, an app like Toggle to track how much time I spend doing things. Mm. And uh, it's it's something I'm inheriting from C, C, uh, CGP Gray because I am a, a sadist who likes to torture myself with the right. the workflows of other people. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> just, we, we can talk about that more in the post show. Um, Kent, what are we missing, man? What have we not done this week that we're supposed to be doing? <sighs> Um, this is the part where, well, usually like 40 minutes ago, we would thank our patrons and our Twitch subscribers. Oh, (laughs) um, yeah. So pretend this is 40 minutes ago where we wittily transition into our Patreon pitch where we say, go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. If you give a fuck and want to give a buck, uh, head over there, uh, check out all the extras that you can get there. Um, yeah, help us out, man. Uh, the, the patrons are sending us to South by Southwest this year, which is yep. pretty great. Uh, they have bought That's us awesome. microphones. They've bought us, uh, a soundboard. Uh, they bought us stickers, t-shirts, all sorts of things, uh, in the past. And now they're actually buying us plane tickets, which is really freaking phenomenal. And I cannot thank our patrons enough. You guys are awesome. Uh, we're, we're going to do some, I know, I know I've said this for the last couple of weeks, but we, we are going to do something soon that is the, the, you're going to love, um, well, okay. so look I'm, for that. I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let the cat out of the bag on that. You ready, Kent? Oh, okay. Go ahead. So we actually had a meeting with Jackie Hearn. Uh, well, she was, she was attendant to the meeting, but not necessarily part of the meeting because she was like, the conversation came up to me and Kent just been in and had the conversation while she was on. And oh, we, right. yeah, we yeah. figured out all the shit we were going to change on our Patreon. Everything like we had, we've got all this stuff planned up. We got stuff queued up, ready to go. But the document that we had the wording down and the levels down, all that shit magically disappoofed into nothing. And we had, yeah, we, yeah, we haven't had time to restructure it and rebuild it. So that's where it's at. And like, we have all this shit that we want to do that hopefully no later than South by will actually get back to it and fucking make it happen. Um, so that that's where Ken's at with that. He's like, "Yeah, man, all this cool stuff I keep promising. When are we gonna do that?" And I'm just like, uh, uh, "As soon as, as soon as my computer magically re- regenerates a document we'd spent two hours working on." Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe maybe Jackie remembers all of the things. Uh, uh, ja- Jackie, give it, uh, make a doc out of your memory of the uh, yeah. <laughs> the meeting that we had. Um, it was like right before her bedtime. She might not remember a whole lot of it. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway, that's uh, Ritual Misery. I'm sorry, uh, uh, patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. Or if you are a uh, Amazon Prime member, 
and you want to help us out, uh, go over to Twitch dot tv slash ritual misery and hit the little subscribe button there and give us jeff bezos's money uh, jackie, uh, does it cost J- you anything yeah jackie hearn says that she remembers everything yeah if you are a, a amazon prime member and you have not gone to twitch yet you can go, go on over there and clicky clicky a couple little buttons use your prime subscription and basically it takes no money out of your pocket jeff bezos is he's got enough money he's not going to miss it and it helps us out quite a bit so go ahead and yep. do that now, don't the Prime subscribers need to manually resubscribe every month, or every, have they made that better? Every month. Every single every month. Every yeah. month, yeah. That is, that is a shame. Um, on, honestly, in, on, to be honest, I don't really mind it so much because we knew, we have a couple people that give us their Prime subscription in a rotation with some of their other shows. It mm-hmm. doesn't cost them anything, and they get it gives them a way to, to timeshare you know, a little bit to help everybody out. So yep, honestly, that, yeah, that's the one thing I don't mind. If you had to go in there and manually resubscribe every time you subscribe, no matter what, that'd be a little crazy. But the free one, right? you know, I, I'm, 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 I've come to terms with it. So yeah, I can yeah. see that. No, it's pretty good. Um, it's pretty and, good. And that's, fact, what, that's what I was doing for the longest time is, is rotating just through all of the shows that I watch. Yep. Um, all that being said, uh, there was some movement on the Diamond Club executive track this week uh getting diamond club more like a an actual network where we can cross sponsor and uh join forces for things like the streamathon and the uh the extra life fundraiser we have going on right now through the end of the year trying to raise ten thousand dollars to help uh children's hospitals uh yeah which is an amazing cause extra life is what we used for the new year's east streamathon two years uh, ago. a little over a year ago mm-hmm. um it, it's wonderful. It's awesome. Uh, do you have a link that you can provide to our audio I, listeners? I, you know, I, um, I, I will as soon as you finish describing what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So for anyone who's not familiar with Extra Life, it is a wonderful organization that gives money to children's hospitals. Uh, fantastic. I mean, the, the there's a lot of great causes out there, but one of the the all time classics that I I will give to. Uh, pretty much any time anybody asks me for money for it is to to raise money for kids. Um, kids are the investment in humanity, basically. Uh, Bit.ly slash Extra Diamonds 2018. Extra Diamonds 2018. That takes you to the team page, and from there you can choose any of the teams that you want to uh, – and any, any of the, 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 the podcasts or other shows that have joined our team. You can select any of them that you want to select – and or to the team itself, I believe, and just donate. It gives you the overall ten thousand dollar goal, and where we're out with it, that's like the central hub of where you can go to find all the stuff. Is bit.ly slash extra diamonds twenty eighteen. Yep, that's really cool, and it gives us a way to kind of keep track of who's raising what. But you know what the cool, the really cool thing about it is, all the money is going to kids. Yep. No matter which team you choose. Exactly. So it's pretty badass. Um, we are a little shy. We're only at twenty five dollars right now. We do have some big plans for it. Um, we are. We're still working on some of that, and uh, uh, some of the people that have joined up, we're going to be working on really closely. But that's that's where all that's at. And like I said, the uh, the executive meeting that we ha- held, uh, it wasn't really a meeting. It's kind of a, a group in Discord. Man, really good stuff coming out of that. We've got some uh, top level approvals on some of the ideas we have, and that's going to be a big thing. And the Diamond Club is going to, it's going to. I'm, 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 man, I'm, I'm so happy I'm a Diamond Clover. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Hell so. yeah. Uh- Yep, diamonds forever. Um, however, not everybody is as keen as we are on the thrills of Diamond Club. Sometimes they have other focuses that kind of align more with the podcast that they do. Speaking of which, Garrett, um, you have recently joined Gunna Geek, and that yeah. is another great network of um, um. not for profit podcasters who do it for the hobbyist activities of podcasting and the geeky activities that they want to talk about. To include you. Yeah. That was a send. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Garrett, go. <laughs> Woo. All right. So, yeah, this, uh, you know, we, we joined in with Gun to Geek about a month ago. Uh, have really enjoyed our time there. Met you guys through there. Met some other really great shows there. We're actually the second GPR to join Gun to Geek. The other one is like the Gallifrey Public Radio. There, there's I a plan. Yeah. They're in the street, cash. and chains. Like we're gonna take them out. It's fine. Yeah, there, um, there there might be a little bit of a Facebook discussion going on on the group page. I'm just saying, it's <laughs> it's things are getting tense. All right. <laughs> There's a lot of gifts being thrown around. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, no, it is It is a really cool organization, and we've definitely seen a lot of growth in our show just in the last month since we've joined up, which, you know, selfish motive, but oh God, that's great. Uh, really enjoy that. Um, yeah, it's it's been really good to be there. Um, and, uh, of course, that's GamerPublicRadio.com that you can find that, and, of course, the AdmissAdventurePodcast.com. And um, at GPub Radio, how about yourself? Are, do you have a, a, a another one that people can just find out what the hell you're I, up to? I don't really do much in the Twitters, but I am at Lord Tots. Uh, Tots is the name I go by pretty much everywhere. So you can get me there. Really just hit me on GPub Radio. I don't care for Twitter outside of what I need to use it for for the podcast. Uh, we're also Facebook at Gamer Public Radio on there. And we have a Steam curator, uh, if you keep up with what that is, you know, and you can look up Gamer Public Radio there. We review all of the games we talk about. We review um, kind of whatever's new, whatever's out, uh, whatever catches our eye. It's not always the newest games, but it's whatever we feel like is worth your time to play. And we mm. try to keep that list updated. Uh, speaking of Steam, real quick, the other sidetrack that I wanted to have a little while ago that I'm just now sidetracking for uh, is maybe a recursive sidetrack. I was notified earlier today that I have a game on my Steam wish list, wish list on sale. So, like the good gamer and frugal guy that I try to be sometimes, I click on the little link to see which of my wish list games is on sale. And turns out like 90% of them are on sale right now. So <laughs> It is it's the restraint. Lunar New Year Steam sale. It's it's um it's it's paralysis or it's choice paralysis is what it is. That's that's because <laughs> I have about I have about thirty games on my wish list and like literally twenty five of them are on sale right now. Like sixty ninety percent off. Like I could get like ten games for a ten dollar bill and I just I can't choose which ten I want to go for. Um, Steam is amazing. Steam is amazing. Is. How about you? Can't uh, where can people find you? Uh, you know, should they for whatever reason? Uh, during yeah, this show, you, decide you know, that you're, you're a person to follow. Yeah, if you're kind of a, a, a masochist, um, <laughs> find me, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Uh, check me out there. I'm always trying to be uh, funny or insightful or, um, uh, I don't know, or neither of those. I don't know. <laughs> uh, pretty much Del Noche or Del Noche 77 <laughs> everywhere else. If you're a beer person, look me up on Untapped. I'd love to see what you got going on in, in your beer world. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, man. Um, if I knew beer was the topic, this whole thing would have gone different. All right. Oh. Uh, uh, that is where it comes in that, hey, you're not doing shit about three weeks from now. We're like, hey, you know, you can come back. We can talk about beer instead of games. Oh, yeah. Um, while we're talking about things real quick, before I plug my own stuff, because that's going to be at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. We have seven people watching the live show right now. If mm -hmm. those seven people are not also following the Have a Drink show at Have a Drink show on 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 Twitch, go follow them. They are just a few people shy. They've already got the hours required, everything else. They just need a few followers to hit that affiliate mark. That is a goal yep. of ours. They're another sister podcast of ours. They're amazing. Love those folks. And we need to get them affiliated so they can actually start making some money to buy the beer that they talk about on the show. And yes. um, yeah, if you're not following Have a Drink Show on Twitch, that is like, that's our call to action right now. The Have a Drink Show on Twitch. Go follow. Just hit the little follow button. You don't have to subscribe because you can't. You don't have to do anything else. Yeah. But just hit the little and heart at the top of the screen. Just make that happen because they are amazing and they deserve the affiliation. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's a crime that they're not affiliated yet. We got affiliated a couple months back and they're not affiliated yet. Um, man, injustice is alive and well in the world. Yeah. Uh, that's twitch.tv slash have a drink show. Even if you don't like beer, please just go follow them and then ignore ignore it. Yeah, after it, that. it literally you costs like you nothing but the 30 seconds of log into Twitch, yep. which should already yep. be there. So. Um, exactly. I don't know where they're at right now, but yeah, as of the as of their last show last Saturday, they were like seven people shy or some stupid number like that. So just <laughs> yeah. make that happen. They're amazing people. Um, and then of course uh, you can follow anything else that we're doing at Ritual Misery on Twitter and uh, RitualMisery.reddit.com. Go and comment on all the shows and uh, tell us how wrong we are right over there. Email us uh, podcast at RitualMisery.com. And, of course, you can go to RitualMisery.com for all of the other links and to give us your feedback on there. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash RitualMisery. I'm going to hit the little outro button right here. 
give Kevin McLeod his props for allowing us to use his music because he's amazing. And if you don't know who he is and you are interested in podcasting, you need to figure that one out. Kevin McLeod. That man is a saint. <laughs> in yep. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for Garrett, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>